Welcome to Stu in Tokyo's Dungeon. Um, I've been watching a really great channel on YouTube recently called uh, Wrangler Star. You can find it. And uh, Cody and his, his uh, lovely wife and his son Jack and every now and then his sister Fresh P and some other people are on there a lot. And uh, it's kind of a, well he calls it modern homesteading. And it's really interesting and I really enjoy it. And uh, my hat's off to him because Cody puts a lot of videos and they're very good quality and they're very entertaining and, and interesting. Anyways, um, he does a lot of things with hand tools. He, of course, masters the chainsaw and other things, but he's also very good with his axes and his cross-cut saws or misery whips as they call them. And uh, anyways, I was thinking about it and I thought, geez, in our camping stuff, I know I've got a, a, a hatchet. Can't really call it an axe. It's a little small for an axe, but it's a hatchet. And I thought, you know, I know it's sitting up there in our camping stuff, which we don't really use anymore since the girls have grown up and gone away and off at university, etc. And and I don't think I can get my wife out camping anytime soon. So I thought I should I should go find that and I should just clean it up and and sharpen it and maybe even make a, a nice sheath for it and. Uh, just have it on hand. I think I could probably use it in some of my woodworking because every now and then I work with some some raw timbers and it would be nice to be able to chop them up a bit, you know, chop some knots off or even split a few lengthwise so I could uh, make some nice staves out of them or something. And uh, also I thought it would just be kind of fun to, to work on this, this uh, hatchet. So anyways, I dug it out and it's not in bad shape. The edge is even well, it's not really dull, at least. It's got a bit of an edge to it. But I was looking at it and uh, trying to figure out what it was. And I probably won't be able to see it on the video there very well. But uh, maybe you can. I don't know if it'll focus. But it's called an uh, Iltis Canadian or Iltis Canada Original Ox Head. And it says made in West Germany. And it's got two kind of maker marks of the ox head there. And I thought, wow, that's kind of cool. And then the handle seems to be something from Canada because I can vaguely make out a Canada here in a maple leaf and maybe garnet? I'm not sure. But uh, the handle looks pretty good. The, the ox head still fits really nice. It's not loose at all. I tried chopping a few things here earlier and the ox head is still nice and tight. And uh, it doesn't have a, you look there, I sanded a bit of the paint off, and it doesn't have a, a steel cross wedge. It's got a regular wedge, but it doesn't have a steel cross wedge. And I'm sort of thinking maybe it doesn't need one. I mean, it's made in West Germany. What, when did West Germany? In 1990? It's 2014. So that's 24 years ago. So I think I bought this... 20 something years ago, so I imagine it was some old stock in one of the uh, hardware stores or DIY centers here in, in Japan. But uh, it stayed on there that long, so maybe I should just leave it be. But I might, I might get myself a couple of steel stepped cross wedges in there as well. Anyways, I'm going to just give this a quick sand and clean it up and sharpen it and just uh, kind of a tip of the hat to Cody at Wrangler Star. And uh, Anyways, just come along and watch, I guess. First off, I have two rotary random orbital sanders. One is a, an old Bosch that I bought that's kind of uh, the green Bosch. Don't buy the green Bosch. They're not very good. Uh, this is kind of worn out. It doesn't really do the random orbital well. As you can see, the dust falling out of it. It doesn't do the pick up the dust in the thing very well. But what I mainly use it for is if i got to sand any kind of steel. For example, if I... Um, <sighs> Don't put a cover on my uh, table saw and uh, do a bunch of wet turning beside it and cover my nice shiny table saw with um, wet shavings of wood that are very tannic and then don't realize it for about half an hour and turn around and see my tabletop all rusty. And this is what I use. I use this with some WD-40 on it and I sand the metal. And so it doesn't really bother me to sand metal with this sander. I don't really care because I'm never using it on wood again. So I use this to sand this. And then I've got my... Blue Bosch, random marble sander, this is a much better sander, and I'll use this to just give the handle a quick sanding, because I like to get this varnish and paint off of here. Uh, one thing I noticed on this is right in this area here, 
there's these little ridges. I don't know if that's just poor manufacture or if it's meant to be some kind of a grip for your, your pinky finger or something, I don't know, but I've been just kind of holding this in my hand and and I don't see the advantage of that. I, so I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna sand those off. Also, I just wanted to notice uh, from uh, learning from Cody's videos, this is, I think, a pretty good handle because the handle here is, is fairly thin and uh, it's got a nice depth here. The grain orientation seems pretty good. But it's got a very nice palm swell here. So that means that this piece of wood was originally quite a bit thicker than it is down here. A lot of the very cheap handles you see on tools now, they're the same thickness here and here, which means they started with a much thinner piece of wood. So I think that I should be able to sand this out and clean it up and make it look nice and be able to put some boiled linseed oil on it. And anyways, it'll take me along here. So I'll, I'm going to start some sanding now. Well, the sanding is going okay, but uh, there's some deeper rust pits here that uh, I can get out with sanding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a wire wheel into my lathe and I'm going to use that over there at the lathe. So I'm going to have to take a little break here and take over to the lathe and take a look-see. Okay, so here I'm at the lathe. I got my wire wheel and my drill chuck there on the lathe. This is, uh, I mean, some guys have a wire wheel on their grinder, but I have grinding wheels on my grinder. So. What I'm going to do here is put my safety glasses on because uh, these wire wheels, those little wires come out all the time when you're doing this and uh, that would not be fun to get one of those stuck in your in your eye. I'm going to speed the lathe up to about a thousand RPM, see how that looks. Oh, that looks okay. Anyway, let's see if I can... pour that rust out of there and then also I want to use this to get in along here because I can't really get sand to there. Speed that up a bit more. About 15 or 1600 RPM. I think 1800 RPM is the standard grinder, grinder speed, so that should work. You see, under all that black paint, there's a rust. So that's why I don't really like paint on my tools. I'd rather have the uh, the tools be uh, not painted. And then search rusty you can say, oh my goodness, look, there's rust. Where's the paint on there? It looks, oh, it looks nice and shiny paint, but underneath it is rust. Well, that's not good. Just finishing up some uh, sanding here, the 120 grit. I think that's come out really nice. I'm really pleased with how that looks. I wish this was a bit more shiny, but uh, I'm not going to worry about it. It's got some rust pits in it here and there, but not going to affect how the tool works. And uh, I'll, uh, now I'm going to just uh, sharpen it. And so I'm going to start off here. It's got a pretty good edge on it still, but I'm going to start off with my medium bastard file. It's got a block of wood here sitting on the on the bench. I think the arc on the axe is pretty much how it was new, so I think it should be fine. consistent bevel on there. Looks pretty good. On the other side. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm going to switch over to my fine bathroom file. Oh, it's cleaning. Clogged up and it needs cleaning, stop and clean your file. Bit of a burr on there right now, that's to be expected, I guess. So now I need to move to my stones. Well, for my stones, I'm going to just try it with my uh, 600 grit stone that I use to uh, sharpen the skew for my lathe. It's a diamond stone. You get a burr on there like that. It's not much of a burr. One of the ways you can knock it off is take the end grain of a piece of wood and just hit it. And that will knock off the burr. Pretty much. Well, that can be sharper. So I got, I got one more before I get out my wet stones, which, you know, got to soak them in the water. And today's not a sharpening day. When I have a sharpening day next time, and I go through and sharpen all my planes and chisels. I'll get back to this for sure then. And use my other stones. But just for today, this 600 grit stone can get this pretty sharp. And then I have one more trick up my sleeve that I'll, I'll give you a look at. Okay, got to move the camera. Okay. Just to give you an idea, this is a piece of paper. This is a bit thinner than printer paper, uh, but the axe after the 600 grit stone cuts it pretty good. Not bad. But I have something here. This is a high speed grinder and it's mounted backwards so the wheel is turning away from me, not towards me, like most grinders. And uh, this is just a piece of uh, medium density fiberboard, MDF, cut into a circle. You can see it's got kind of grooves and flats and rounds on it, and that's because I use this for honing my carving tools. So I take some rouge, happens to be green, but it's called rouge. And load the wheel up. Now you see it's green. As I sharpen this, it turns black. And the black is metal from the blade. It doesn't take much, and boy, you get a nice shiny edge. More importantly, a nice sharp shiny edge. Helps have a bright light. Pretty good. I use this for sharpening knives, I use it for sharpening uh, the skews that I use on the lathe, I use it for sharpening carving tools. And you can even use it for sharpening chisels, but you gotta be careful because you can round an edge over on it. So uh, generally on chisels I don't often use it. Well, let's see. Another piece of paper here. Let me turn that noisy thing off. See how it cuts. I think that's not bad for an axe. See if I can do shaving sharp. Yeah, that's shaving sharp. Gross, huh? Here. Okay, well, now I'm going to put some 
some blow, some boiled linseed oil on the handle. I guess I might even put my maker's mark on it. And uh, then I'm going to work on a sheath. When I worked over there on that, that uh, hone, that power hone, that little stuff on my hands here, <laughs> got the handle kind of dirty again. I'm just going to give it a quick rough up with some sandpaper. Uh, I'm only sanding it to 120 grit. I, I think for hand tools there's no point in going beyond that because, you know, you don't want them to be super slick. I mean, you're trying to hang on to them. And I just think the a waste of time and effort to go past 120. I mean, your mileage may vary, but for me, I find 120 about good. It leaves it a little bit rough so that it can uh, absorb some oils from your hands and stuff. Got my boiled linseed oil here, or blow as we call it. Yellow. And I'm going to just get a bit of that on there. Make sure I get lots around there. Soak the end here. And let the end grain here suck up some more because that's what end grain does. Acts like a big straw and just draws the oil into the wood. Now, I think that is looking quite a bit nicer from when I started. Nice and sharp now. I'm just going to grab my maker's mark and uh, fire up my torch and Ooh, almost dropped that sharp axe on my foot. Actually, it didn't. I'm just kidding. Okay. Now, let that sit for a minute, suck up that oil, and then I'm going to uh, put my maker's mark on it. I'm going to figure out where I'm going to put it. I'll put it on the end there, or put it just here somewhere. Yeah, well, that turned out pretty nice, I think, when you consider what I started with. Okay, before I put my maker's mark on there, I just wanted to uh, say one thing. Um, I use this blow like uh, Cody from Wrangler Star does on tool handles and some some other things as well. Works really well. It's good stuff. But I don't like to use it on anything that I would I would use for food. And so another finish that I really like and it's really simple and straightforward uh, is this. This is just heavy mineral oil, heavy USP mineral oil. Tasteless and odorless laxative for the relief of occasional constipation. You think, what? What do you put that in your tools for? Well, I don't really put it on my tools. I will put it on some tools, but what I usually put it on is things like uh, bowls that I make, you know, things like this. You know, a nice bowl like that. And I, I put the uh, mineral oil on something like this because I expect this to be used and to be, to be food to go in it and for it to be washed. And um, if you put a, a, a film coating on that, something like a varnish, it will eventually flake off. You now shellac is a good option, but shellac is, is good, but it's kind of fragile. The advantage of this is it soaks into the wood and seals the wood. Now, you can go down to the, the Home Depot or one of the, you know, one of the Borg stores and you can buy this and it's called Butcher Block Oil. And this is uh, 500 milliliters, whatever that is in, in uh, this is from Canada, so I don't know whatever that is in, in what is it, a pint, half a pint, something like that. And if you buy the butcher block oil, this costs about 10 or 12 or 15 bucks. If you buy this, it's like, I think this was like $1.49 at the pharmacy. And it's essentially exactly the same thing. So when I, often when I, when I make a bowl and I give it to somebody, I will take a small amount of this oil and put it in a small container and give it to them and say, look, when the bowl starts getting a little bit dry, just rub some more of this oil on it. And it looks brand new and it works good. This is very good. This also works pretty good for tool handles and stuff. So if you can't get boiled linseed oil, like for me here in Japan, I got this from a friend of mine who, uh, who got it on at the, uh, the PX on base, but because um, it's getting a bit old. 
but I can find it here, but it's bloody expensive. I mean, this says here $3.45 for 32 fluid ounces. And the last bottle that I bought was probably maybe eight fluid ounces, and I think it was $15 or $16. So be, blow is pretty dear to me, so this is a, a not bad alternative. It's not a hardening oil like blow, but it, it still works pretty good for lots of things. Okay, enough of that. So I'm going to uh, spark up my torch here. Heat up my uh, maker's mark. that with a little bit of sandpaper. <sighs> Last little bit of oil on there and voila! Cleaned up axe or hatchet, camp axe, I don't know what you call it. I think it worked out pretty good. Sure, nice little little unit. And boy it's sharp now, let me tell you. Okay, well Again, a tip of the hat to Cody over at Wrangler Star. You inspired me to bring this uh, tool out of my camping box and uh, freshen it up. And I'm going to try to make a sheath next. That'll be part two. Okay, thank you very much.